welcome to 22nd lecture in mechanics of materials. The last lecture we saw two different possibilities by which the shear stress distribution can be in an I section. Basically we saw that there can be a possibility of sigma xz shear stress arising when the flanges of the I section is thin and there will be only sigma xy shear stresses on the flange thickness is thick compared to the web uh, thickness. Okay flange width is uh, small compared to the web thickness. Okay. So, basically we saw that in both the cases the shear stress values will be different depending upon how the stresses are distributed. Okay. So, basically also we saw that uh, depending upon how the section is built up whether the sigma xz shear is going to be resisted by the nails or weld or sigma xy stresses is going to be resisted by nails or the weld you have to use the appropriate shear stress distribution to compute the connection details okay the connection shear stresses and then the do the connection detailing okay so in the last class also we alluded to the possibility of there arising a torsional moment because of this shear stress distribution in i section there won't be a torsional moment because the moments are balanced because the flanges were of equal width in both the directions okay so now we'll go ahead and understand what do you mean by a shear center Okay, and how do you compute the shear center for a cross section? Shear center is a geometric property, and we will see how to compute the shear center. First, let us define what a shear center is. Shear center is a point such that when the externally applied load acts on this point there would be no net torsion no net torsional moment in the cross section. Okay. For example, if you take I section, if you take I section, it is of equal length on either side of the web. So, if this is B f okay, then what happens is your C g is at the center this is z and your C g is this is your C g okay. and the shear center will coincide the C g because as you saw in the last class you know the shear stress distribution were to be horizontal there will not be net torsion produced in the cross section because this moment is balanced by these two are of, of same magnitude q 1 q 1 and this is of also magnitude q 1 q 1. So, the red q 1 produces a clockwise moment whereas the green q1 produces a anti clockwise moment which balances each other and then there is no net torsion and your shear stress there is a vy acting like that vertical shear force okay to balance that there will be a shear force externally applied in this cross section at the cg so will also act through the CG or the cross section. So, there will not be any torsion produced in the cross section if the load were to act along the CG or the cross section. Okay. So, this happens for all symmetric sections loaded about the plane of symmetry. Okay. So, basically now uh, shear center 
would be a CG if loading is about a if loading is about a symmetric axis. We have not defined what a symmetric axis is yet in this course, we will do that shortly. Okay. But if the loading is about a symmetric axis that is equal area is distributed on either side of that axis, then this shear center will coincide with the CG of the cross section along that direction, okay, along the symmetric axis direction. Okay. So, in other sections, the shear center will not be the CG of the cross section. For example, if we look at the channel section, we will see today by regional derivation that for this the shear center lies here, this is the shear center whereas the CG of the cross section would be here, this is the CG of the cross section right okay. because this is not the y axis here is not a symmetric axis whereas z axis is a symmetric axis. So, the shear center lies on the symmetric axis z axis whereas y is not a symmetric axis. So, basically your loading has to be along the shear center here. Okay. Now, same thing we have to see what is the shear center for angle section and for a T section. Okay. 